Dear friends, today I am here to speak something about dreams. We all have different experiences of dreams. I mean fantastic experiences of dreams. In your dreams you might have climbed the top of the Everest. You might have dived into the fathoms of the ocean. You might have traveled to the other end of the world. You might have soared high into the air. A dream gives you number of opportunities, wide opportunities. There is no limit in a dream. Here today I am going to tell you the dream of a great freedom fighter Sarojini Naidu. It was a different dream. Dream about our country India. Before we go into the poem, we should know who she was. She was a great freedom fighter. Sarojini Naidu. She is known as the Nightingale of India. She was born in Bengal in 1879. She went to England for higher education and she studied in King's College in London. She came back to India in 1902 and she joined the great Indian independent movement. And you know, her first collection of poetry was published in 1905, The Golden Threshold. And after that, in 1912, she came again with another collection of poetry that is Bird of Time. And another collection of poetry was published in 1917, Broken Wings. And you know, Sarojini Naidu started writing poetry at the age of 11. She was a fantastic poet. Beautiful poems she wrote and in almost all poems she kept the image of a bird. Why? Do you know? A bird always speaks about liberty, freedom. And it was her meeting with Gandhiji in 1940 in England changed her life. She was attracted by the principles of Gandhi and she traveled through India spreading the principles of our Gandhiji. It was a great experience. And she underwent imprisonment for several times. A great freedom fighter was Sarojini Naidu. Now we will read her poem, The Song of a Dream. Once in the dream of a night I stood, long in the light of a magic room, so deep in visions that poppy like strand. And spirits of truth were the birds that sang. And spirits of love were the stars that blew. And spirits of peace were the streams that flowed. In that magical wood in the land of sleep. Long in the light of that magical grove, I felt the stars of the spirits of love. Gather and gleam round my delicate youth, and I heard the song of the spirits of truth. To quench my longing, I bent me low by the streams of the spirits of peace that flow in that magical wood in the land of sleep. Rosni Naidu is describing her dream entry after independence. She had a dream about her nation. It should be the land of truth. It should be the land of love. It should be the land of peace. That's why he visualizes such a nation in her dream. And so, to establish this idea, she uses several images in her form. She's alone in a magical world. The key word in the first stanza is magical wood and she is in a dream of a night and she is in a land of sleep and if you remember these three points you can easily understand the poem she is in a magical mood she is in a dream of night and she is in a land of sleep and she uses three important images in the first stanza she finds birds on the trees as speaking truth. So the birds stands for truth. 
and she sees, she sees the shining stars, that means waning stars, as love. Love always radiates. Love shines. And she uses the image of the stars to speak something about love. And thirdly, she sees streams, a flowing stream that always stands for peace. Peace should be going from one place to another. So throughout her nation, she visualizes peace. India was under British rule and to make this land a free one, she wants these three things, truth, love and peace. So in a free India, independent India, she dreams more truth, love and peace. The second stanza, she just elaborates the idea what she has mentioned in the previous stanza. So she is in the magical grove and she sees the stars gleaming there as the spirits of love. They are gathering and gleaming. Gather and gleam. Alliteration is used in that line. So, so stars are like spirits of love. Secondly, birds. Birds are the spirits of truth. They are always singing truth. So the songs of the birds are described as the songs of truth. And thirdly, streams. Streams are the spirits of peace. They are always flowing. It should not be stagnant. It should float everywhere. Peace should be everywhere in India. That's why. So she establishes this idea by using the metaphors, spirits of love, spirits of truth and spirits of peace. And the poet wants to quench her thirst for peace by bending low and taking a handful of water from the stream of peace. What a beautiful description is given here. What an idea it is. The problems of pre-independent India is closely packed in this world and it is a beautiful dream about a new nation. We can move with this. We can sing with the birds. We can shine with the stars. And we can flow ourselves with the streams of 